Now we have Dr. K. Anil Kumar, who is an alumnus of the Sri Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning and Chief Scientific Officer at the Nagarjuna Group, Hyderabad. He is an author of three internationally reputed texts in the area of biocatalysis and green chemistry. He was awarded the Young Scientist Award in 1996 and has been recognized as the, as the top innovator pharma sector from India. He is the chairman of Ethics Committee of Shankar I Foundation, Vishakhapatnam, and he was also a member of Board of Studies of Sri Satya Sai Institute of Higher Learning. He is honorary adjunct faculty at Vigyan University, Sri Maharishi Vedic Technologies, Guntur, and Symbiosis, Pune. He has over 40 publications in peer-reviewed journals and 25 patents. He will be speaking on chemistry in the five elements and Vedas. With prayerful pranams at Bhagwan's lotus feet to the one seated here and seated in the hearts of each and every one of us, respected elders, erudite scholars, and dear brothers and sisters, I feel honored to be for this wonderful opportunity that has been given to me. I thank Bhagwan. This morning, when I was listening to Govind Rajan sir, that five years back Swami had called him and said he will call him and that happened to be today. I realized the whole program that's going on is planned by him and him alone. And therefore, that gave me strength because he is given this work, he will give the strength. Swami used to always say, if he gives the work, he gives the strength. So with that confidence, I'll now um, go on to the topic that has been given to me. But just before I move on to that, the chamakam that my brother Raman, Dr. Raman just now referred to, in the last chapter, you have odd number and even number. As a chemist, when I was looking at this odd number and even number, uh, numbers that we chant in the last anuvakam of chamakam, I found that the odd number 1 to 33, if we take it as the elements, means the atomic numbers of the respective elements, I found all of them are like metals. They have a giving nature, giving of electrons. Odd, num odd numbers are giving of electrons nature. And the even number electro uh, atoms or the elements have a nature of taking the electrons. And this classification was a wonderful classification for me. And then I'm building on it for, and also all the necessary essential nutrients, the three major nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, which are needed for the plant growth are all from the odd number elements or, or the odd atomic number indicating and also in our practice for all worship of God, we normally use odd number. Every item has to be odd number items. So indicating that if we have to become Godward and godly, we need to give and giving leads to lustre, giving leads to strength, whereas taking does not give us the strength. In fact, the periodic table is a very good example of what Mother Nature is teaching us. Metals, by definition, are the ones that give electrons, and they are lustrous, they are strong. Non-metals, by nature, are the ones which take electrons, and therefore they are very weak. They do not have lustre, they break a lot. So indicating that once we give, we grow in lustre, we become more strong. So moving on, now the topic here, moving on, I just wanted to bring to your notice that Vedam, the sounds of before, I wanted to quote from Bhagwan, a very important uh, quote, I wanted to bring it to your notice. The Vedic mantra has divine power which interacts with the human power. When the mantra is chanted with proper intonation, the 65 divine forces that are latent in man become manifest. The divine force that emerges out of the human being merges in the sounds of the cosmos and assumes the form of universal consciousness. This nada is Veda. I'll refer to this, we'll move on. So this nada is Veda is something that I understood as a part of my study of the Panchabhutas. But the Vedas themselves, 
to understand the meaning of Vedas is not very easy. Like Sayanacharya has said, there are six meanings for every word in Veda. They are Vachyardham, means literal meaning, Lakshanaardham, which is the meaning based on attribute, the Sutraardham, that is holistic meaning, the Yajnaardham, which is the ritualistic meaning, Visheshaardham, which is the interpretation based on Desha, Kala and Dharma, and Aushadhyaardham, which means the meaning related to medicine. In fact, every Anuvaka of Rudram has the description of the medicinal plants and the way to prepare the medicine for a particular disease. Each Anuvakam discusses with one one disease. Right from TB onwards till Madhuvyadi is explained in Rudram. The solution, so different interpretations give us different meaning. And more importantly, the Visheshardham, each one can interpret the way we want. So uh, just to give you one episode which had happened, when we had learned Vedam 2003-2004, we just then started chanting Narayan Upanishad. So we chanted Narayan Upanishad that day and post chanting, one of the senior devotees came to me and Vedna and sir and said, you are saying Brahmanyo Devaki Putro Brahmanyo Madhusudhanom. Is it, and you are saying Vedas are eternal, but Krishna was born only in Dwapara. How is it that Brahmanyo Devaki Putro? We didn't have an answer. And you know, Swami listens to everything that goes on. The very next day, Swami came for darshan. Swami stopped Vedam and started the topic of the social activities, the water care, the educare, and then Swami very naturally moved on to Ishwaramma. Swami said, Mother Ishwaramma's three desires, selfless desires, gave rise to these, these three big pro uh, wonderful projects. And then he went on to say, Mother Ishwaramma's original name was not Ishwaramma, but Namagiri Amma. Post the birth of Bhagwan, Bhagwan's grandfather, Kondam Rajugaru, named, renamed Namagiri Amma as Ishwaramma. So Krishna did not become the Lord because he was born to Devaki. Devaki has been renamed, Mother has been renamed as Devaki because Krishna took birth. So that is the way we need to interpret. So similarly, moving on, the other such wonderful lesson that we learn from Bhagwan, every sentence of Bhagwan's is a glorious Vedam. Interpretations can be many. Another one instance I'll quote before I move on, though I know the time is short. I can't miss out this anecdote. This was, an, this was during early 2000s when Bhagwan used to come and sit on the uh, portico, the the stage in Kulwant Hall, and then converse post-interview before bhajans, is to converse with the students and staff, and also give darshan to the devotees at large. So one such day, this, uh, the topic that he was discussing was that comparison. Comparison is bad. There's nothing like a good comparison, and no one should ever compare. If, if Swami went on to give it in a poetic way, if he has kaldu, I have, if he has a car, I have kaldu, means if he has a big vehicle, I have my feet to walk. If he has a big bhavanam, I have a bhuvanam, which is the whole earth itself. And then Professor Anil Kumar made bold to ask Swami one question. He said, Bhagwan, I have a query. He said, Bhagwan, unless we compare, there's no progress. And he gave an example, unless India compares itself with America, developed nation, we don't progress. So without comparison, how can there be progress? And Swami made this wonderful statement, which, is, which immediately I wrote it down. This is Vedam, actually. Swami said, what is progress? Leni di pondatamu kadu, unna di penchu kovatamu. And a, what a wonderful explanation it is. And you can give different interpretations. I just have translated into different words. You can say, it is not getting what you do not have. It is increasing or inculcating or growing what you have, or you can take the meaning of complete Advaitic philosophy. That means, what is it actually that is there with us? The Atma. So realizing Atma is real progress and not running after, hankering after things which are transient. So you can take multiple meanings. So every sentence in Veda, every sentence of Bhagwan 
is Veda, and each one gets different interpretations as and when it is needed. Finally, he is the one who gives, and as per his grace, we get the interpretations as and when we require it. Moving on to the Panchabhutas, this is whole thing has been developed when I, when, by Bhagwan's grace. When we were chanting the Taitri Upanishad, we say, Akasha Dvayu Vayu Ragnihi Agni Rapaha Adbya Prithivi Prithivya Oshadhaya Oshadhi Bionam Annat Purushaha. So, this actually gives the sequence of creation. From Atma has arisen the Akasha. From Akasha, Vayu. From Vayu, Agni. And I was feeling little odd. From Agni, how can water come? How can water come from fire? There must be something else, something deeper into this. So I started looking at the attributes. So the Akasha, the Atma is still energy. And when it starts vibrating, we call it as Akasha. Why is it that we say vibration? Because the attribute of Akasha is Shabda. Shabda here, we need to understand in greater detail. Can we move on to the next one? Shabda here means something very, very different. In fact, the Panchabhutas, when we had presented it in, in the institute, that evening Swami came to us and said, you presented it well, but then it is not only Panchabhutas that make the universe, it is Trigunas and Panchabhutas. So at that time, I didn't understand. But when we get into the, spring, the string theory, we see that there is infinite, steady, still energy over which infinitesimal elastic loops, which are called as the strings, appear because of disturbance. And these loops, in turn, if you calculate, mathematically calculate, they give rise to three superfields and five spin types. Exactly the sequence which our Vedam talks about, the three trigunas and the five, I am not going into the depth of this because of lack of time, and the five gunas, exactly five bhutas and the three gunas. And the three gunas also are the three different words that we use in science. The tamoguna is inertia, rajo is the entropy, and sattva guna is the cohesive or the anti-entropy forces. These are the three attributes which are there for every material in this universe, right from the sutratmas. In fact, the word that is used in the co uh, correlation of this in Vedic uh, terminology is the super strings are nothing but sutratmas. In fact, very close word you can see. Also, there is a word called Vyoma in Lalita Sastranamam, Vyoma Keshi Vimanastra Vajrini Vamakeshwari, it is said. And even Lord Shiva is also uh, one of the uh, uh, Sastranamas, one of the Nama is Vyoma Keshaya Namaha. This is the Vyoma Kesha. And in fact, if you go back further, Swami at that time, in, way back in the 60s, devotees used to worship Swami literally. I mean, Swami used to be sitting on a chair and they, they used to do Lalita Arsasana Marchana. That time, Swami, when this word Vyoma Keshi Vimanastha came up, Swami showed his hair and said Vyoma Keshi Vimanastha. So he is the embodiment of, he is that Supreme Lord, the Shiva Shakti, which is at the root of the creation. And that gives rise to the... So there is a disturbance, there is a movement. And how, how do we understand this movement? Again from Swami's letters, Swami has said, I divided myself from myself to love myself. Means there was a desire. There was a... This is what we say in Taitri Upanishad, So kamayata bahusyam praja yeyeti shatapo tapyata shatapas taptva. So there was so kamayata. There was a kama, there was a desire, there was a disturbance, there was a movement, there was a vibration. In fact, Gaudapada in his Karika on Mandukya says movement is the cause of creation. So there was a disturbance and that disturbance is actually captured as a vibration and that vibration is what we call as an attribute of Akasha. And how is that vibration, that, that sound that we are referring to as an attribute of Akasha is not the sound that you, we understand at a gross level because this requires a medium for transmission. 
That sound, there was no medium at that point of time. So what is that sound? We get an understanding from Lalita's astronomer, the next one. That sound is or actually sound is of four types. Para, Pashyanti, Madhyama and Vaikari. This is what in Saraswati Rahasyopina said. It comes as I am Chatwari Vak Parimita Padani Tani Vidu Brahmana Ye Manishinaha Guha Trini Nihitan Angani Turiyam Vacho Manushya Vadanti. It is the fourth sound, that is the sound of Chat uh, Vaikari, which is what we talk about. But then the, there are three other sounds behind this Vaikari sound. The Para sound is the sound of the Almighty. The para uh, pashyanti sound is the sound in the mind and the sound of madhyama is the sound that is of the life force. And this para sound is also called as nada. That is why I referred to in the very first slide, nada is veda. Therefore, where is veda existing? It is existing in each and every one of us. And therefore, there is Vedas are universal because Vedas are nada. And irrespective of caste, creed, race or gender, they are existing in each and every one of us. And therefore, they are universal because Veda is nada, nada is para sound and para sound is exist. This is what in Lalita Sasnamam it is said, para pratyak chiti rupa, pashyanti para devata, Madhyama Vaikari Rupa Bhakta Manasa Hamsika. So it is in the cavity of the heart that this sound of para exists. So having understood the sound, we now move on to the next one. So if there is a vibrating energy, the attribute that is added to Vayu is Sparsha. And Sparsha, Sparsha, Sparsha is actually pressure. Pressure is force per unit area force is mass into acceleration. Therefore, conversion of this energy into packets of energy or mass is now called as Vayu. Therefore, the Maya has been created between Akasha and Vayu. This is my understanding because conversion of en matter to energy we can do, but conversion of energy to matter is a divine will and multiplication or diversity came up in the formation of Vayu because different masses started forming and that is why Vayu has come from Akasha. And when these different masses of high energy start colliding with each other, there's an excitation and emission, therefore Rupa is added and therefore it is Agni. When they join together to form the molecules, it is called as the Apus because in the chemical senses, among the five senses, we classify touch, seeing and sound as physical senses, taste and uh, the smell as chemical senses because a molecular interaction is a must to feel both these senses, these sensual uh, uh, feelings. And therefore, to indicate that molecules have started forming, it is apus and when it solidifies, it is prithvi. So you can see it's a very logical and a natural thing that is going to happen when there is a vibration, when there's a desire, when there's a creation starts, when the Lord wills to multiply himself, it's very natural that we get all this. And then I was stupefied when I saw this image in one of the uh, uh, Google uh, images. It, Nataraja we think is only a symbolism of all the Panchabhutas. Not only Panchabhutas, it's also symbolism of Trigunas and string. You can see the other thing there. It's almost like a string. His form is like a string. And the three gunas are, there is a tamoguna under his feet, there is rajoguna in his movement, and his form itself is sattvaguna. So there is the three gunas, plus the string theory, plus the panchabhutas, all of them symbolized to show that Lord is the master of this universe, and he is doing this dance. We have created Nataraja as a symbolism. So in fact, the whole of Vedic creation has been symbolized in one form, which is Nataraja. So moving on to the last one, before I close. So uh, just a word on the approach 
of the Vedic sciences for chemistry. This also again from Bhagwan's guidance we got. One of the visiting professors had come and Swami asked him, what do you teach? He said, chemistry. Then Swami said, that was the first time we heard this word. Swami said, then you have to read Kanada's work. Till that time we did not know who is Kanada. Then we went on to understand who is Kanada. We started looking at it. We saw that Kanada's Vaisheshikam is something like the treatise of the most, uh, first, first book written on chemistry was Kanada's Vaisheshikam. And the beauty is, he starts the whole approach of chemistry on two basic things, which both of which have, have um, really attracted my attention. The first one is that everything has been created because, by dharma and therefore everything has a purpose. The second one is very important. Apart from the Panchabhutas, he has added four more attributes to every material and that is Dik, which is space, Kala, which is time, Atma and Manas. That means these are in fact, these four attributes are not part of the present day chemistry. When we talk of a Padartha, we don't really look at these four aspects. So there's a lot more we can dwell into and my understanding is that more we get into Vedic Sign, Vedic interpretation and then start taking the fruits of that into the present day science, we find that the science itself will benefit out of this approach because there's a lot more that present day man is not looking at. So due to lack of time, I'll stop here and thank you all for giving me this wonderful opportunity. I'll thank, I thank the organizers for calling me here and giving me this time. Thank you, sorry for exceeding the time.